Yeah, school. Very re the resources are through Lena. So. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, let me pass to another question here. Um, so how do you ensure when you get into the project that this is service learning and not just community service? We're not about, we don't give college credit for service, right? That people don't pay thousands of dollars. I remember the very first service learning class I taught, I'll just tell this little anecdote, and at the end of the class I had students write reactions to the course, and I'll never forget this one student who wrote, if I had wanted to do service, I would have gone out and committed a crime. <laughs> so we don't, we don't, students don't pay thousands of dollars to go and do community service. They pay thousands of dollars to come here to learn, and we don't give credit for service. We give credit for learning. So how do you ensure that there is learning that emerges from this service? Again, Norman. Well, that's a natural segue for me um, with the crime. Uh, for those of you, <laughs> for me personally and for my cousin, um, for those of you that know that inside out what I do is you take half students from Duquesne, you have half men or women who are incarcerated in the county jail, so our, our service is to hold an entire class in the jail with these men or women. So we, the services, we're serving them, but they're serving us in the process of learning together. So this is a pretty unique experience and it kind of really covers that from, from the get-go. What do you want your students to learn and do they learn it? I want them to learn uh, the basics of the course that I would do even on campus, but when, when you do it in the in this setting, you get at understandings of labels and stigma and stereotypes uh, on both sides. Whether it's you know uh, the, these freshmen see these guys in the red uniforms as monsters and misfits, or whether these guys in the red uniforms see these kids as you know uh, brainiac rich kids or something. Good. And of course, you teach is introduction to criminal justice. Would anyone else like to respond to this question about how do you make sure there's learning? Well, I would offer two comments. One, in order to get the students to engage, one of the techniques that we've used for a few years now is that we offer the students a menu of options. So it's the student selection. It's the student selects the learning experience, the service opportunity from a menu of choices. But in terms of linking those two, the service to the learning, I, in my experience, and I think the experience of our learning community, the key is the, the key is the reflection. That if they're just going, if it's if they perceive that the service is disconnected from what's going on in the classroom, wholly, it doesn't mean that they have to talk about it every day in class. But there should be formal classroom activities that link, that, that, that uh, ask the students to reflect on the experience and to link it, link those experiences directly to the learning objectives in the, in the courses in which they uh, are, are uh, participating. So I, th I think that, that act of reflection is the biggest as far as linking the service to the learning outcome. Yeah, we had a really positive experience with journal writing as well. And we also learned exactly what the students were doing on site, which was helpful, because when things weren't going well, they told us, and we were able to make changes. So we really benefited from the journal writing project. Taylor, you want to Yeah, comment? I mean, my students are at the other end. My, my students are seniors, so uh, it's a really different situation. And I mean, the way I would answer that question is the projects that they choose are specific to the skills that they have learned as psychologists and social scientists. So we do surveys, we do interviews, we do focus groups, we do oral histories, uh, we do research projects where they put information together. So it's a different kind of thing, I think, you know, once they're pretty specifically trained. And to use those skills, for me, that's what service learning at the end of their college career is about. So they really see you know, what does it mean to be a social scientist and what can I contribute as a social scientist and not just as a human being. Yes. And if I could add to that, yeah. I'm doing much the same thing in my class with our students. Uh, 
except they're freshmen. So part of what I do is the class is very dedicated to saying, here are some basic observational techniques you should use. There are survey techniques. Now we're going to go out to the field to answer the questions needed by this agency. For me, that's fairly structured. But one of the things that sort of emerged out of our uh, out of our learning community, and, and I think a lesson is that you also look for opportunities to integrate things. So yes. Craig, uh, I hate to put you on the spot here, but you know one of the things you did last year in the middle of the semester uh, was come up you know, as we are sort of pushing this idea of analyzing people's uses of, of uh, parks and attitudes towards nature. You came up with a wonderful project that, could, that came it out. It was of not a planned thing. I mean, I think at one point you said, I think this would work really well as you were developing mm -hmm. your class time. And, and I think it's important to look for those kinds of opportunities, too. It's something I already had in place, and I thought, this will save me a lot of work. Well, there's that, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd like to go back to this reflection um, subject that, that uh, Lou and, and then Kathy spoke of. I, and I, I'm going to direct this to you, Kathy. With the, the journaling that you spoke of, do you give your students specific prompts that, that cause them to, to think in certain directions, <coughs> or, or is it more free form? Um, in the fall, all three faculty members share a common book, and we use that book as a discussion starter. We also use it to design our writing prompts, and so we ask our students to, well, in often case, in often times we give them at least three possible questions. One question will ask them to tie their service work directly to class content and then we also give them more freedom to discuss service work in the context of personal reflection and um, Tim Vincent also worked with me on this so I, I think he might have taken a different strength approach. of service learning is obviously the human element makes for some really super powerful experiences that you know students have come back and said this is the most powerful thing I've had in my entire learning here at Duquesne, this, you know, sitting down and talking to these people in, in this community or whatever the, your individual projects are. However, <laughs> because of this, the human element, it, it's impossible to control, right? So you can't control, you know, the, the group if, if the site, you know, closes on you. I've had that happen to me, too, for one project. And you, you can't control that, you know, that element of what you, what is going to be said by your partners, too, right? So if you're trying to do something and um, you know, I had one element where in, uh, we were doing interviews in terms of narratives, and um, I mean, it wasn't that the person was unbalanced, but um, uh, the person wasn't quite there, we'll just say, in terms of the, you know, the, it wasn't a very helpful, I think, interview that for the students, but that's also part of, a powerful part of the learning as well about then letting you bring it, actually that one worked for teaching you know, class concepts. This is how interviewing works, right? You know, you don't control the situation. You had questions, and we had these questions, and this person went where they wanted to go. With that's human, the human characteristic of this qualitative research. And then, uh, but also the, on the other side, for students, you can't force the reflection on them, right? The you know, the metaphor is always of this lamp for education, the guiding light. You can't force the students to see the connection. I mean, I've had some classes where it's so obvious and so clear. And they'll even write in their reflection paper, oh, this is why we're doing this, I see. And then at the end of the semester, they'll say something like, I, you know, a student, student reflection, like you had on, on a, you know, a SES form or something. Like, I didn't see the connection. And every single day, we'll talk about the connections, right? So, you know, both of those elements, I think, are important to emphasize that there's a lack of control in terms of the, you know, in the situation. And there's also a lack of control in terms of your students seeing those connections as well. So we can, you know, we have limitations, and those are important uh, you know, to, to recognize that we're not going to have 100% of our students have, you know, the same experience. Yeah.